So why is that a worry with cannabis? Well, why that's a worry with cannabis is, I, I use this diagram to explain. If the brain is a bit like a kind of muddy field, and water flows through the brain, yeah, taking information from one side of my brain, maybe to the other side of the brain, wherever that information is going, I'm going to make a nice big pathway. Here's one here, and this is a dried up riverbed. Yeah? So there's going to be a big pathway in your brain saying, oh yeah, lots of information go down there. Places where not a lot of water flows, say maybe here, you don't get so much places for it to, to move through, so there's no channels there. Okay? So what we're looking at in the adolescent brain is laying down these big channels where information flows in your brain. And some of those channels, hopefully for all of you, are what we call non-psychotic. They're just about having your feet on the ground, knowing what's real and what's not real, knowing what's a reasonable thing to believe, knowing what's an unreasonable thing to believe. Now if you're taking a drug like cannabis a lot, day by day or week by week, there's, you're beginning to make pathways in your brain that maybe are not quite so non-psychotic, but maybe are a little bit more prone to making you feel a bit paranoid, a bit anxious, seeing things in a kind of slightly upside down way. So if at the end of your teenage years, when all of this kind of formation of the brain that we only just have discovered about is coming in to sort of crystallise, and there's your motorway system in your brain, if at the end of that time, what you've laid down is a load of rather more psychotic pathways, pathways where you're feeling a little paranoid, pathways where what's up sometimes means it's down, what's light sometimes means it's dark. If you've got those pathways and you haven't got so many of these, you're in big trouble, big trouble. And we know that a certain percentage of the population, maybe one to two percent, just are unlucky and they have genes that mean that they're a bit more at risk of these very serious illnesses like schizophrenia. If you've been doing this to your brain with cannabis, you've just massively increased your risk of having these very serious and potentially lifelong illnesses. So that's sort of one of the reasons why we're really, really interested about the young person's brain rather than this happening to someone in their sort of mid-twenties or thirties, where at least they've got, they've got the motorways laid down because they had their adolescence and they got it all sort of straightened out. Um, I'm not saying Cannabis is fine for a 20-something year old, um, but the risks are much less, as far as we know from the evidence, than for, for younger people. And, yeah, that's how it is. It may not be fair, but that's how it is. Okay. Okay, so it, it seems like there's actually quite a clear link between using cannabis and getting some sort of psychotic illness. And yet we know that quite a lot of people are using cannabis, but not all of them uh, are becoming psychotic. Now that's a really good question, Liz, and I, and I think um, it's really important that people are clear about that. One of the reasons we worry about psychosis is that it's an incredibly serious illness. They tend to be you know, there's at least a risk that these are lifelong illnesses that can really destroy people's lives. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons we get worried about them. The other reason is that, you know, although they're not that common, they're not that rare either. Between about 1-2% to 2 of the population mm -hmm. will develop or are very vulnerable to developing a psychotic illness. So, so if this video is being played to a group assembly, say, of 200 people, there's going to be at least two and four people. Two to four of those pe of that audience mm. will would, would 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 be you know are at risk of developing these illnesses, which you know they're treatable, but you know they are very serious and they you know sometimes it's very difficult to treat them. Mm. So we know that um, cannabis on its own is unlikely to cause a psychosis without someone being a bit vulnerable anyway. In other words, having the genes that make you uh, more likely to get this kind of illness. And that's, you might say, well, that's fine. Then. Okay, so as long as I'm not vulnerable, then I'm, you know, I'm not going to get it. But, but how, would, how would you know if, if you were vulnerable to a psychosis? That's exactly the problem. You don't know because at the moment we're not at the stage where we can do a blood test and say, 
you have a high risk of a psychosis, but mm. that person doesn't. We don't have that skill. Mm. Maybe in 10 or 15 years we will. I doubt it, actually. It's a more complex condition. But what we absolutely know is that um, once you've started having a psychosis, it makes it more likely that that thing will go on. So the one thing you do not want to do is to trigger this very serious illness. So that's um, one of the, the, the reasons we're concerned about cannabis. But actually, much, much more is the effects that you can see on a whole range of other problems that young people who come to us have. Mm -hmm. um, and they're much more ordinary uh, you know, problems. The problem is, if you're stoned in the day, you actually don't learn mm -hmm. nearly as effectively as the guy next to you who's not stoned. And when it comes to an exam, you're probably not going to do as well. Mm. Um, so that's a big problem. It's associated with kind of you know, becoming quite depressed at times and lethargic and finding it much more difficult to kind of get motivated. And this is a time in your life where there are very real things at the end of the runway. It's like you know, you're just about to take off, but out there there's you know, trees and houses that you've, you've got to get over the top of them. Mm. And um, if you're, again, under the influence of cannabis quite a lot of your period of your youth, it's much more difficult to get those skills, skills mm. that, you know, once you're over 18, it's very difficult to go back and find other places to get them. So a lot of the difficulties that we're seeing with cannabis are not just people becoming really quite seriously psychiatrically ill, but it's a bit just like they're kind of just going off course a bit and then realising suddenly, oh my goodness, you know, I'm, I'm about to hit a tree and I wanted to be about 100 feet higher than that, but I'm, but I'm not. And unfortunately, the way life is, the way, you, the way you take off, kind of tends to say a lot about where you are maybe five years from now and ten years from now and twenty years from now. And when I, I can even hear myself saying it, that you know, when I was the age of the young people that might be listening to this, it's difficult to think you know, about what I'm going to be like ten years from now. Um, very difficult to think about that. Um, but that's my job, is to kind of talk about it. So there we are. So if a young person wanted a little bit more information about this kind of stuff or, or thinks they might have a bit of a problem with cannabis and wants to get in touch with us, how can they do that? Okay, that's the, that's the $60,000 question, thank you for asking it. Um, so it, the, the main thing is just to get in touch with us and there's various different ways you can contact us, telephone or email um, or you can, um, we can exchange text messages with you. Some young people need to feel quite care, sort of um, secure about confidentiality and um, so we have very clear rules about confidentiality in the team which we can explain to you if you wanted to talk to us. Um, we can do anything from just giving some basic information and some um, uh, advice through to more complex treatments if that was required. Um, and uh, I guess the key thing is for you and us to meet up and um, for us to think about what's going to be helpful for you as an individual because one size doesn't fit all. So I hope that um, yeah, great. You'll, you'll, you'll give us a call if, if you need to. Thanks. <laughs>